All right, for this process, I've just got back from the grinder pretty much. Uh, you can see I've grinded both these. I had to do a wedge, like a 90 degree, uh, to make everything fit up in these corners, basically. Um, I've already cleared away this section here. Um, basically here, it's you can just drill it out. Uh, I started with the lower uh, size bit. It was a 2764. Uh, worked my way up to a 2964 and went ahead with the half inch uh, size drill bit and you can determine that with the drill index gauge uh, like I said before you just gotta know your sizes um, as you can see it's right on pretty much a half inch and that is what we are installing once the threads are all the way through um, so basically, yeah, if, if I didn't say before, the best way to do these is getting uh, really good pair of snippers, or what you know we call them, is uh, mainly in the tool business or mechanic business or pair of dikes. So, um, here we go. We're just going to clip away at it. And what you want to do is you kind of just work your way around uh, the whole joint as far you know as, as what you got on this uh, plastic ring left okay you kind of work your way around it uh, you can kind of see uh, most of these will break away. You just take them. Uh, you take the same, you know, just kind of work your way with the uh, Paradox or your snippers or however y'all want to say it. And just kind of work the circle. Uh, you want to be as flush as you can. Uh, you're trying to make a perfect circle as you're doing it. Um, it also works, I mean, you can, you know, if you're experienced with tools and mods, you can heat this plastic with a, you know, a small torch even. And it makes it more malleable where you can actually work the plastic. Um, for you guys, I'm just doing it cold. Uh, it's probably the best way. You just want to clip these away all the way around and you end up it's really rough uh, I've already finished this other side uh, basically you take a file you know you will have uh, different varieties of files if you're mechanical uh, this is a round file um, chainsaw guys usually got something like this it's to sharpen the chain um, basically all you have to do is just run it around in the center parts uh, you know you want to get all the edges really smooth you know just you want to make sure this fitting fits in there really nice and that's all you're looking for and you want it to snap in and I like to have it to snap but uh, that's the what that's just me I mean y'all can make it rough as you want I mean as long as it works for you guys it works so uh, whatever you whatever works best for you guys All right, I got most of that all trimmed away right here. Uh, you can see there's still more intruding out. Um, pretty much, yeah, the best way you're going to do it is going to be the uh, good old bastard file or RAS file. And uh, I suggest doing it on your lap, you know, whatever's proper for you is comfortable. Um, but basically, just you want to file this down flat. And that's all you got to do, um, just like I did on this this side here. Uh, you want to get it as even and as flat as you can. Um, just file it down. Uh, just makes it look better. Alright, I got everything pretty much filed down. Uh, looking pretty good. Uh, you could probably use a little more. Uh, just, you know, light little filing. Uh, just try and get everything flush on the back. It's more of appearance than anything. 
Like I say, if you're in a hurry, it's not a big deal. It's just whatever, how, how you want it to look. Um, I previously grinded both of these pigtails to fit in the corner of the uh, router. So, uh, basically, we're, we're going to be installing these. Uh, all you want to do is you're going to push them in. Make sure you remember which one was right uh, channel, which one you made for the left channel. They're going to be grinded different because you got to grind uh, the the bottom side and and the exact side which is going to plug in. It's just an oversized plug, so it uh, snapped into place. Uh, what you want to do from here? Uh, they got this rubber gasket, and I don't know if you want to put that in, but if you're going to put it in, put it on the inside of the unit, um, which I forgot to do, but uh, it's probably a good idea if you're going to have this thing outdoors or whatever, uh, it, you know, it, I guess it kind of just makes a better seal. Uh, it's meant to be on the inside of the actual connector. It really doesn't matter, it's up to you if you want to throw that on. Uh, they got these star lock rings uh, you want to throw one of those on it helps to bind the uh, actual uh, nut that we're gonna put on there uh, it doesn't it wouldn't hurt if you had Loctite or like a mild type of Loctite where it's like a green or a blue maybe just to keep that really tight uh, without slipping once you get everything all torqued down um, I'm doing it by hand right now um, what you want to make sure is this bottom joint down here um, I pretty much already did a mock fit up with the board it needs to slide directly underneath here uh, you need to make sure you got plenty of room right there if, if you don't have any uh, clearance for the board to slide under that you're gonna have to grind that down some more okay here I'm having an issue with the left channel it's not going to clear this capacitor right here evidently we have no room for this plug-in uh, the right side's already installed I'm trying to install the left side here it's just not going to clear um, unfortunately what I had to do is I had to pretty much chop the end of this thing off and uh, Basically what we're ending up with is you got your center antenna. I'm using the ohms meter with the 200 beeper. Okay, so that's the center. We got the center, it's fine. Uh, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to solder on the lead wire to that. To where it makes that connection. Um, we're also going to have to solder on another wire that makes the ground which is the outside of the case um, just I'm holding it against it and we're getting two different signals there that means this connector is still good um, all I gotta do is I gotta either use some type of uh, clamp around here if I can't solder to this actual base um, other than that it's got a solder joint right here in the middle for the actual feed um, excuse me right there for the signal and uh, basically I'll be sliding this is going to go in between this capacitor it is right in the way so there's no way for that lead to work at all um, without modifying this actual whole unit and that's the surprises you get as you modify something uh, you never know uh, what you're going to run into and you just got to keep going and uh, rethink it and persevere <clears throat> all right I'm getting ready to fix this RF uh, connector uh, first you want to do is get your soldering station warmed uh, go ahead and pretend the connections with solder it's always a good idea uh, it makes it easier and uh, the place where I've actually ground before or had to ground down uh, will accept solder so 
Uh, that's where we'll be attaching the ground uh, lead on that. And all we have to do is get it set up here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of heat shrink uh, for the ground portion of the wire. And I'll show you how to do that as well. Now the signal wire, wire is connected. Um, we'll be putting, I'll be putting some heat shrink on. So basically, just what you want to do is figure out the pretty much the size you're going to need. You're just going to measure the length right there. Uh, use the pair of dikes and chop off what you think is going to be enough to uh, cover all that. And that looks probably pretty good right there. Uh, you can kind of bunch it up. Uh, Kind of do a wad up um, so you can solder it and then have it spring back uh, when you're done. And uh, that'll be uh, a little bit better. That way, you know it's, it's you know it's insulated and it's not gonna mess with anything um, as far as uh, coming in contact with any other components. So we'll get that done. All right, now I'm just got it all set up here in a little jig. Um, yeah, just kind of pull back on that heat shrink a little. You don't have to use it if you don't, or you know, if you don't have any or can't find any. It's just kind of a better idea. C try to keep things insulated. And just kind of let that solder flow a little bit. And it should have a good connection now. And it looks good. Everything looks bonded well. I'm going to add just a little bit more to make sure. I'm kind of working in between this heat shrink, but it's going to start melting on me here. And uh, there we go. Get it all attached. Just kind of watch it flow. And uh, be careful because the wire will get warm. Um, it's just up to you on your tip of your fingers, you know, what they can withstand. But. Uh, it will definitely get warm, so you want to do it as quick as you know possible, pretty much. And uh, yeah, everything looks bonded well. So uh, next step, I would uh, run an ohms check just to make sure uh, all the leads and everything are, are working proper. And I'll do that here in this next little bit. All right, for this next part, I'm going to be running an ohms check. I got it on uh, just to make sure all the uh, connections are uh, good and bonded well. Um, that and see if there's any interference. I got it on uh, 200 with a beeper. And you go ahead and check your ground. And that's working good. I forgot to trim this lead away uh, on the end here, so I'm going to do that real quick. This is what you'll be attaching to the board. Uh, go ahead and check that uh, where you soldered it down here first and then uh, do the other end and that's making a good connection um, so go ahead and check the base part right here and with the signal wire um, just make sure it's not interfering uh, as far as your connection I'm trying to do it where you can see it um, put the lead on the ground and then do your signal wire. And if you get no sound in, uh, or see any ohms on your meter, uh, you did a good job. So just double check everything. Everything's good. Um, now that that's good, if you're using heat shrink, go ahead and shrink it down. That looks pretty good there. Everything's good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sleeve it, sleeve over it, and uh, chop, chop you off another decent sized little piece you think you're going to need. Um, slide it on the end here. Slide it all the way down as far as you can get it. 
and go ahead and uh, shrink that on down as well. Alright, there's my new modified lead and that's going to work just fine. Um, I d had to do it on the side where it's going to fit up in here but uh, I have plenty of clearance when it goes in there so everything looks really good. Uh, next all you want to do is you want to pre-tin these uh, once more and then once you do that you're going to be soldering it back onto the board and uh, we'll do that next step so we're almost finished. Alright, now I'm going to be installing this in uh, using that uh, washer. Let's go ahead and put it on in there. Everything looks pretty good. Once again, use a star washer. It came with the kit. Go ahead and put your nut on there. Spin her on in, tighten her down. That's all you got to do there. Uh, just make sure that you're clearing everything and it looks really good so it's going to work just fine okay got that installed um, tightened down really good um, just make sure everything's pretty even um, this board is actually going to sit right on here there's not really a clearance issue anymore on the bottom uh, all you want to do is just slide your board back into place Watch out for these back connections. All you got to do is kind of line them everything up and it kind of snaps into place. And just make sure everything's lining up really good. Um, it looks like everything's clearing just fine. So I'm not worried about it. Um, it's up to you how far you want to go. Um, right here, we're just going to re tin these. Uh, that way we're getting ready to actually solder it to the board in, in place so you just want to do that <clears throat> go ahead and do each uh, end right here just get it kind of float on the end where it looks pretty good so you don't it just needs to uh, make a light connection so it's not anything that needs a, a lot of solder right. so just remember that your ground wire was the big part of the solder on the board and uh, I think that's just work out there uh, go ahead and solder that to the board Then do your signal wire next. And you got that all attached. And there you have it. Pretty much you just want to have your leads. You're going to have to mess with, kind of knock these down or just bend it over slightly. Uh, I probably would run it back through here just like that uh, everything's fine I left a, a little bit extra wire um, it's not a big deal just kind of coil it up the best you can on the board uh, you can use some uh, clear tape or something like that I'd probably f prefer clear tape um, they actually had a piece in here to hold the wires down previously um, it kind of set right here um, kind of like that but it was you know the wires were a lot shorter so you might want to do something similar like that it really doesn't matter it's up to you uh, how you want it to look and you know it's just a good idea probably to do that so I'm just gonna put that old tape right across these uh, chips on the board here and that should hold everything down like it pretty good um, actually it's not sticking so uh, I'm gonna get another new piece of tape for that um, other than that yeah I just uh, prep the other end here all 
All right, I went ahead and taped it uh, up in here. Just kind of looped it like that. Um, it'll work out just fine like that. It's not going to be a big issue. Uh, now we're just going to prep this wire. Uh, just use your paradox, give it a snip. Uh, you can do it either before the link or after. On this case, we have plenty of room, so um, just chop that end off there. Um, you can continue to use your dikes if you don't have uh, wire strippers. I prefer these. These is, makes it a lot easier. Um, I'd go. It has an index on here, and I, I'm going to use it at uh, three quarters of an inch. And basically, you're just going to uh, if you have strippers or dikes, you just want to kind of walk it around it uh, so, so you kind of break that uh, insulation. And just give it a good tug like that and uh, kind of be careful uh, when you do that um, you got the ground wires in between here and you want to not uh, trim it off too far if you do you still have enough lead uh, just go ahead and cut it back a little more uh, but just be careful if you did it the first time to really take your time and do it uh, the second go around because you don't want to uh, damage any of the uh, ground wires on that. So yeah, basically, yeah, we're just gonna pull that off, and uh, it's got enough. I did pull off quite a bit on that go around, um, but I think there's gonna be plenty. I might go ahead and just trim it back, and I'm gonna do that off camera and. Uh, all you got to do basically is just resolder it to the board and you know reassemble the unit so we'll do that next okay went ahead and uh, shortened it up a little more so I could get a uh, little more ground wires I with those wire strippers it went ahead and pulled uh, too much of it uh, when I when I did it I um, just need to kind of take your time uh, patience is everything um, basically you just want to take that ground wire away from the signal wire and kind of get it uh, where you can get it twisted and you just twist the ends and you're going to want to now uh, solder that end um, I got to trim off a little bit of the signal That should have got it. The wire's being kind of funky. Um, but yeah, just go ahead and, and probably I would recommend your dikes on th on this particular cable. Um, it doesn't appear as good as quality as the one I've uh, had to modify on this uh, left channel. Um, just go ahead and trim that up. <clears throat> All right, I got that retrimmed. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and tin it with some solder. And go ahead and just repeat kind of what you did on the other side. Okay, everything's looking good. Um, now you probably want to clean your tip. We're going to be soldering it to the board. Uh, I've already applied solder to the board. Uh, you may need it, you may not. Um, now we're just going to start out putting the. Uh, I'll probably start with the ground wire. It'd be uh, going to have to loop it around here. Um, I don't know if y'all can see that. Just going to get in there and get it all uh, warm and. Uh, you'll see it start to melt and just uh, let it sit for a little second and you should have a, a pretty good bond. Alright, now the ground wire is in place. And just to repeat that on the uh, signal wire here. And remember the ground was the big solder on this particular board and 
directly next to that, the little solder is the signal wire. And it only takes just a split second, really, to get it uh, soldered on there proper. I know it's kind of out of focus for you guys. I'm actually using a Canon PowerShot camera, camera for this. Uh, I apologize, but this is pretty much the only thing I got. So, yeah, just make sure everything's gonna clear. Uh, Everything's, you know, you just want everything, when the case sits down, and everything's going to fit right. And uh, after that, it's just reassembly, um, the way you take it apart. And I'll go ahead and do that, uh, you know, that way uh, if you kind of missed the beginning or you just, you know, just kind of forgot how to do it, I'm just going to go ahead and do it for you guys. All right, I had to come back and lower my ground wire uh, just unsoldered it and resoldered it so it kind of comes in more in an angle uh, it was kind of sticking up straight so basically you just want to make sure that when it sits on the board that the rest of the case that goes around it it's not going to interfere with anything um, I'd probably recommend go ahead and get your ohms meter back out uh, if you have one uh, it's just to double check things um, I'm going to start with the signal wire here and we'll put that on and check the connection on the inside here and that sounds good um, do the same with the ground uh, to the case everything's checking and this is another like kind of a ground shield so you, you definitely know you got a good connection uh, with the ground um, go ahead and check between crossing uh, you want to go ahead and put the lead on the back on the signal wire and touch it to the ground and you shouldn't hear anything and uh, do that with both sides just to you know go ahead and double check things uh, just make sure that nothing's touching and you got a good connection um, I'd go ahead and probably go back with some uh, tape a little bit of tape you don't have to do this uh, factory kind of likes to keep their uh, wires and things out of, out of certain areas uh, you can go ahead and just reapply some tape there um, kind of hold things down the factory actually had some here uh, it went across here earlier so uh, just up to you if you want to do that or not alright now we're back to reassembly uh, I'm going to start off with the light indicator bar. Um, it just kind of, you know, you just kind of set it in here. It's got uh, a front tab and little clips that hold it in uh, right here. All you want to do is just set it back in there in, in between those. And once you get everything like it goes in between those clips and everything, and it just kind of just snaps into place. And once you get that, that's that part um, go ahead with the back side now it's actually going to be considered the top of the unit and just kind of slap her on down alright I just uh, wire right here is kind of in the way I'm just going you know, to slightly move it over just a little bit and it's trying to hang up on, on the end here um, you can start with this end first and it should everything should just pop straight together uh, once you get everything and that's back together uh, now you just want to put your torques back in And we'll do that. I think somebody ran off with my gun. So I will have to go find my tool real quick. Alright, found my screw gun. Uh, just the same uh, drill bits or uh, torques uh, 
bit I got. It's called a T10, I believe. It's, it's that's what size it is. But uh, usually these come in, in uh, kind of a rack with all the different sizes. You just have to figure out which one it was. Uh, which you kind of probably should know that anyway, because you got it apart in the first place. And, uh, you gotta be real careful with one of these. Uh, it doesn't have limited slip or anything, so it's. You know, you can actually break it off in there. But uh, I've done a lot of these, so I've kind of got the feel for uh, what the torque should be. And you just kind of hear it kind of bind a little bit, but you don't. You know, once you can, you can kind of feel it before it actually does that. And you can always do it by hand as well with this particular uh, screw gun. It actually has a, a lock mode. All right, got those all back in place. Everything's real flush. Uh, just make sure that all around your connections and fittings that everything you know is, looks the way it was pretty much when you took it apart. Uh, that way, when you put these side pieces on, uh, they should have no problem just snapping straight back in where they were, and it just kind of uh, fits straight in there. You kind of walk it down, you'll hear it snap as you go. Repeat that on the other side. And just kind of use your palm. You may think you got it in there, but uh, as you walk down you'll realize that it's actually going into place all the way. Um, so that's the side. All you gotta do is the same with the front. Use your thumbs. Pop straight back in there and uh, apply this back plate. Just remember to start with these uh, the round clips and uh, just kind of center it on there. Be a little stubborn. Actually, got it backwards. There we go. And you should hear everything just snap together as you do it. These, uh, actually, I think you gotta. The way that was, you gotta do the front ones first. My little mistake. Uh, so go ahead and pop this back off if, if you did that. Uh, yeah, you gotta get these little clips in first. And of course, it's being stubborn. There it goes, and that's it. Uh, router's all back together. Uh, now these new ends, uh, we got an external antenna. Basically, we'll be screwing to this por portion. Um, for the rest, you know, we got the old school Lynx's screw-in antenna, and uh, basically we're gonna be putting that on on the uh, left channel here. Uh, for, for part being in in the house I guess and uh, this other lead is why we, we had to do this modification is so we could screw the uh, outdoors antenna to it and uh, I hope uh, you get a lot of good information out of this and um, you know it goes well for you as it went for me I was glad I could uh, show you that I've, I've been looking online a lot and I have not seen really a video how to do that so I wanted to go ahead and make you one. I um, hope you enjoyed it and uh, happy surfing.